Welcome back. So far in this course, we have used CPUs to do calculations. But in addition to CPUs, all modern computers have also got GPUs, graphics processors. GPUs are responsible for everything that you see on your computer screen. But you can also use GPUs to do any kinds of calculations, just like CPUs. And today we will learn how to do that how to actually ask your GPU to do calculations that you want. But let's first get a bit better understanding of what kind of devices GPUs are. If you need lots of raw parallel computing power, you will often find more of it in GPUs than CPUs. For example, if you look at our classroom computers, the CPU can do at best something like 460 billion single precision floating point operations per second. And as we have seen in our exercises, you can get pretty close to this figure also in practice. This is an impressive number, but if you look at the GPU, you've got even more power there. Our GPUs aren't particularly modern or efficient, and they can still outperform CPUs by a factor of three, at least if you're doing single precision arithmetic. For double precision arithmetic, you probably want to avoid this as far as you can. Let's now compare CPUs and GPUs, first by looking at what kind of parallel computing resources are there. Both CPUs and GPUs have got lots of pipeline arithmetic units. In the best case, if a code manages to keep all arithmetic units busy, each arithmetic unit can initiate one new operation per clock cycle. And in both devices, the arithmetic units are not only pipelined, but also wide. On our CPU, you can use vector operations to do eight similar operations in parallel. While on our GPU, the arithmetic units are even wider. You can do 32 similar operations in parallel. On the GPU side, the programmer's perspective is somewhat different, as we don't use vector operations, but instead of that, we program it as if we had 32 threads running in parallel. More about that soon. So, we've got pipeline arithmetic units that do many similar operations in parallel. And moreover, there are lots of such units. If you look at single precision floating point arithmetic, our CPUs have got four cores and two arithmetic units per core, so in total eight arithmetic units that we can use in parallel. Our GPUs have got an even larger number of arithmetic units. There are five streaming multiprocessors, each with four arithmetic units. So in total, there are 20 arithmetic units that we can use in parallel. So we see that overall our GPUs have got a lot more arithmetic units and they are much wider. However, this is not the whole story. CPUs and GPUs make different trade-offs between doing lots of things in parallel versus running sequential code fast. While our GPU has 10 times more parallelism, the clock frequency of our CPU is more than three times higher. So in the end, our GPU isn't 10 times faster than our CPU, but only three times faster. But of course, that is already enough to get us very interested in GPUs. So how do we program them? Unfortunately, as we already hinted, the programming models are somewhat different. So we will need to learn a new way to think about parallel programming when we switch from CPUs to GPUs. In a sense, the programming model of GPUs is simpler and more flexible, but it is also different, so it takes some time to get used to it. In the CPU, we got a small number of threads, maybe just one thread per core, while in the GPU, you will create a huge number of threads, maybe thousands or even millions. No worries, threads are lightweight on GPUs, and not all of them are running simultaneously. Most of them just sit there waiting for their turn. Threads in our GPUs are organized in so-called blocks, which then consist of warps of 32 threads. More about all this soon, 
but it is already good to get used to the fact that GPU threads aren't entirely independent. They are organized in warps, and threads in one warp always work together. But while we had few threads on the CPU side, the threads were doing wide vector operations using wide vector registers. So in one step, one thread is doing lots of work. On the GPU side, we don't do that. From the programmer's perspective, each thread is just doing plain old scalar operations. But because the threads are organized in warps, scalar operations in GPUs are not that different from vector operations in CPUs. On the CPU side, you had one thread doing eight similar operations with the help of vector instructions. On the GPU side, you got a warp of threads doing 32 similar operations with the help of scalar instructions. So in both cases, the hardware is really good at doing lots of similar independent operations in parallel, and maybe not so good if you would like to do lots of different things in parallel. In addition to doing arithmetic, you can of course also do memory accesses in your code. On the CPU side, we have seen that we can use vector operations to read a full vector of data from the main memory. So this way we basically get eight consecutive scalars from memory to registers in one step. Similarly, on the GPU side, we can have a full warp of threads reading scalars from memory, each thread reading from its own memory location, and this way we can get 32 scalars from memory to registers in one step. But one key difference here is that we don't need to read 32 consecutive memory elements. So we have got a lot more flexibility here, which is going to be very useful. So basically, whatever you can do on a CPU with vector operations, you can also do easily on a GPU by using a warp of threads. Things just got wider. Instead of eight wide vectors, you can use 32 wide warps of threads. And things got more flexible, as different threads can, for example, read different parts of memory. So let's summarize what we have seen so far. On the CPU, we use threads and vector operations. On the GPU, we just have got lots of threads. We don't do vector operations here. We just let a whole warp of threads do scalar operations. But what about the third form of parallelism that we had on CPUs. Instruction level parallelism. What is its role in GPUs? Let us recall why instruction level parallelism was important on CPUs. When a CPU executes one thread, it looks at the instruction stream far in the future, and it tries to find some instructions that are ready for execution something that does not depend on the instructions that are currently in the pipelines. Therefore, a small number of threads is enough, as long as you have got enough instruction-level parallelism in your code. But GPUs are very different. They just look at the first instruction of each warp. If it isn't ready for execution, the whole warp will have to wait. So instructional level parallelism isn't really that relevant here. As long as you have got lots of warps that are ready for execution, the GPU can find something to do. But you really need lots of warps. And as each warp consists of 32 threads, you will need a very large number of threads. So to summarize, the programming model of GPUs is pretty straightforward, as we will be primarily dealing with only one form of parallelism, lots and lots of threads. When we use threads on the CPU, we will use threads on the GPU. When we use vector operations on the CPU, we will have a warp of threads doing similar operations on the GPU. And when we use instructional level parallelism on the CPU, we will just create more threads on the GPU so that there is always something ready for execution. Just threads, 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 lots of them, organized in blocks and warps. Now, 
Why do we need to learn all these new ideas? Why couldn't we just have one programming model that we could use to program everything, CPUs, GPUs, whatever you have in your computers? Unfortunately, the CPUs that we have are what they are for historical reasons. There is tons of old sequential code out there, written a long time ago, and the CPUs still try to run such code reasonably well. And then there is a lot of complicated hardware to support that, out-of-order execution logic, very high clock frequencies, many layers of cache. While GPUs are modern tools that have been designed from scratch, and there is no need to worry about how they would run old sequential GPU code because such code doesn't exist. So one can design a simpler hardware with only one goal in mind. Get the maximum throughput from parallel programs. And this is also directly visible in the programming interface that we will use. GPUs are massively parallel processors and they only care about programs that can be organized in a very large number of parallel threads. So we got two processors inside our computer. How do they talk to each other and coordinate work sharing? Here is a simplified view of what you will find inside your computer these days. There is a CPU that is connected to the main memory. This is what we have been using so far in all our programs. And there is a GPU that is connected to the GPU memory. This is very much like a separate computer, able to run its own program, fetch data from its own memory, write results back to its own memory. And there is a relatively slow communication channel between the CPU and the GPU. High latency, relatively low bandwidth. And using this communication channel, you can move data back and forth between the CPU memory and the GPU memory. And most importantly, the CPU can send instructions to the GPU. For example, the CPU can send a piece of code to the GPU and ask it to execute it. And in the next part, we will see how to do all this in practice. There, we will write our first GPU programs.